Okay, he's been more contrite today. He's apologised unreservedly for a catastrophic error. If you're wondering what Occam's razor is, by the way, it's a principle from philosophy. Um, so you suppose that there exists two explanations for an occurrence. Occam's razor says, in this case, the one that requires the least speculation is usually better. So when presented with competing hypotheses to solve a problem, one should select the solution with the fewest assumptions. So everyone goes, well, that's obviously what he meant. He certainly didn't make a gag about rich people. Speak to Marcus Stead, freelance journalist, political analyst. Um, the police are investigating this. We know it's just due process. Um, has he been a victim here? What's your thoughts a day and a half on? Good evening, Ian. Evening. Um, my initial thoughts about this when I found out yesterday were that Danny Baker had been very clumsy and very foolish rather than malicious. Mm -hmm. And the thing that bothered me, first of all, is we just heard that clip from the James O'Brien show. His initial reaction was not great. Um, he was being a little bit too defensive on Twitter when mm -hmm. it happened in his sack. And he was being cheeky on the steps of his house as well, and it kind of grated a bit, didn't it? Yes, that's right. He, 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 he didn't, it wasn't good PR, to say the very least. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to look at the bigger picture here. Um, Janet Street called has known Danny Baker for, for over 40 years. She gave him his first job yes, in she television did. in she about did. 1980. She did. You, you've known him for several I applied for that programme and got rejected. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, and I think what we need to bear in mind, okay, we find out this police complaint has gone in. There are serious problems with racism in society, and obviously that's a very serious matter we need to address. But scapegoating Danny Baker in this way is a form of virtue signalling by those who are doing it to make themselves look better and to try and make him out to be something he's not. He's clumsy, he's foolish, it was a, a crass thing for him to do, but I do not believe he's racist, and I think we're taking our eye off the ball where there is real racism mm. in society, which is what we should have been focusing on. Yeah, it was very interesting, because I, I thought of it, when I, when I heard about it, I thought, of, I thought of Danny and thought about what must be going through his head, I thought about my mate who had to basically sack him, I thought about Roseanne Barr and thought, well, that's kind of, she was trying to be too clever about a sort of monkey joke as well, and it mm. didn't work. And I also thought about John Barnes, the footballer, who said when well, those guys were banned from football for swearing and using racist abuse to Raheem Sterling at Chelsea a few months ago, he was saying, look, it's all very well to ban these people, but we're not dealing with the problem. The better way to deal with it would be to get these guys, don't ban them from football, but get them to realise that what they're doing is not just insulting, it's hurtful, and it's, it, it's just, it's hateful as well. But we don't, I don't know, where are we with this topic, do you think? Well, I, I know the person you're referring to who sacked Danny Baker yeah. because a friend of mine knows him as well. Um, but wouldn't it have been better to offer Danny Baker two options? I would have called him into the office and I would have said, look, Danny, this is a crass thing you've done. Yeah. I can either sack you yeah. or you can donate, say, a month's wages to a charity and I'll invite you to take up some kind of educational or do, do a Or do a broadcast about a program really looking into that subject that, that mm. doesn't pull its punches, maybe. Well, that's right. That would be a very good way of doing it. Because he would do it brilliantly. To, to make a program about it, take up some educational activity to improve his understanding. Mm. Um, we are all a product of where we, brought, where we were brought up, and the, the fact is Danny Baker was brought up in post-war South London. He perhaps doesn't have the subtle nuances that uh, people with a better education than him have. Mm. And this is just a lack of education. And, and as Janet said in her article, he's a guy who doesn't always think before he speaks and thinks before he acts. And that's caught up with him in the past in his career, as you and I both uh, know. Are we a hypersensitive society now? Are we reacting in the wrong way. We live in an age, don't we, of safe zones and no platforming at universities. And a part of the problem is I think the younger generation, the millennial generation, are a little bit too shielded from opinions they don't like. Now, that in no way condones um, racism. That racism is absolutely abhorrent. But at the same time, in this day and age, we have online mobs, Twitter mobs, bandwagons, knee-jerk reaction, people hiding, hiding behind pseudonyms. I've seen how these Twitter mobs attack LBC presenters, in particular James mm. O'Brien, on a daily basis. Mm. And I, I'm politically no ally of James O'Brien, but I've seen some of the abuse he has to tolerate. Mm. And we have these various causes, whether it's vegans, Corbynistas, both sides of the Brexit argument. They say absolutely appalling, disgusting things on Twitter they'd never say to your face. And the other problem with Twitter and social media in general is we have this sort of echo chamber mentality where people tend to follow people who are likely to agree with them and see the world in the same way. And they think anyone who has an opposing outlook on life or an uh, opposing perspective mm. um, it is somehow not only wrong but bad. And mm. you can think somebody's wrong as much as you like, but once you start to think somebody is bad, you can't reason with them. And look, <laughs> there are people who are saying, okay, all sensible people would agree that Danny Baker was wrong to post that picture. But some people are saying, look, let's have some education. Let, let's, you know, deal with this in a pragmatic way and let's not overreact. People have, uh, 
attacked people who have said that on Twitter today mm -hmm. and have gone completely over the top, saying mm -hmm. that these people are, are abhorrent for even suggesting that education and an apology might be the best way forward. Mm -hmm. Danny Baker is a very rare radio talent. Yes. It's, there aren't many people like him in British radio, let's be honest about it. Nope. But... Uh, but to lose him, I think, over this would be very sad. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Marcus. Marcus Stead, who's a uh, freelance journalist, political analyst. So I've, I've often thought this, the way that we deal with our sort of, you know, our witch hunt. Um, we